our goal in this series of videos is to understand enthalpy as a concept and learn how to do a variety of calculations related to enthalpy in chemical reactions. But before we get there, we need to revisit the first law of thermodynamics and say a few words about work. And that's what we're going to do in this video. Now, we've discussed so far some distinctions between different types of energy. And there's one last important distinction we need to make, that between external energy and internal energy. And internal energy, which we're going to represent with the symbol U, is far and away the most important type of energy in chemical thermodynamics. Because what we're interested in is the energy inside our system due to the kinetic and potential energy of the molecules within the system. That's internal energy. External energy, which we're much less concerned with, has to do with the system moving through the surroundings, for example. Kinetic energy of the entire system as a whole. We don't need to know anything about the inner workings of the system to calculate external energy, and so it's not very interesting if we're chemists interested in the energetics of the molecules within a system. So, internal energy, U, is the sum of kin kinetic and potential energy within a system, and this word within is really sort of the key there. Now, let's turn the clock back to the first law. So we used this previously in setting up heat balances in calorimetry, and there are a few different ways to state it. The most common one colloquially is that the first law says energy is neither created nor destroyed. This means that the energy content of the universe is constant. And this is ultimately because the universe is an isolated system. The same is true of a system in isolation. An isolated system contains a constant amount of energy that can change forms, but that cannot be created nor destroyed. Now, what this means for a change happening within a system is that the change in internal energy must be due to one of two types of energy transfer, either heat transfer, which we rep represent as Q, or work, which we represent as W. Heat transfer results from a change of the random motions of particles within the system, and work results from a change in the coordinated motions of particles within the system, so non-random, essentially. And so there's a logic here to the first law. Any change in internal energy within a system must be due to either random or non-random motion of the particles within that system. Let's take a look at this figure on the right and talk a little bit about the signs of heat and work and how those relate to changes in internal energy. The way we think about the signs of heat and work in chemistry to me is very intuitive because if the internal energy of the system is increasing, the sign of heat or work is positive with respect to the system. If the internal energy is decreasing, the sign of heat or work is negative. So for example, in an exothermic process, say there's no work, the process is just purely exothermic, if Q is leaving the system, this Q out value will have a negative sign. On the other hand, if the process is endothermic, if there's an endothermic process happening with respect to the system, the sign of heat will be positive. And this is pretty straightforward and jives with our notions of calorimetry and heat balances that we've dealt with already. Work is kind of the new guy here. And to understand work, we can really zero in on these words on and by. So when work is done on the system, that's increasing the internal energy of the system. Think of compressing a spring. That's doing work on the spring, giving it energy, which it can release if we let go of the spring and allow it to spring outward to its equilibrium position. So when work is done on the system, increasing its internal energy, the sign of work is positive. On the other hand, when work is done by the system, on the surroundings, the sign of work is negative since the system is expending energy in some sense to do work on the surroundings. It's going to be an important skill to be able to understand, for example, in a problem whether work is being done on a system or by a system, and whether we're thinking about an exothermic or endothermic process to get a handle on the proper values for these signs. We also need to say a few more words about exactly what work is. Now, work you've probably heard of as the motion of a force through a distance. For chemistry, that's not the most useful definition of work. In fact, we often think of gases doing work in three dimensions rather than the one implied by the kind of mechanics 101 
definition of work. And the particular type of work that a gas can do or that can be done on a gas is called expansion work. Now this is a bit of a misnomer as compression is a type of work done on a gas, but when a gas expands, that gaseous system is doing work on the surroundings or work is done by the gas on the surroundings. Because expansion is a bit of a misnomer, this is also called PV work because it results from changes in the pressure and volume of the gas as it's compressed or it expands. An example of PV work is shown in this figure here. We start with a gas inside a cylinder with a piston on top. We push down on the piston and that decreases the volume of the gas. V2 is less than V1 or V1 is greater than V2. What's the sign of work in this case? Well, let's think about it intuitively first. We have compressed the gas, and if we were to let go of the piston, the gas would expand back up spontaneously. We seem to be increasing the internal energy of the gas through this compression process. That suggests that the sign of work is going to be positive. And in fact, that's the case. The sign of work is positive. There's a mathematical way to understand this, and that's to use this equation for expansion work. Expansion work is equal to negative pressure of the gas times the change in volume of the gas in the process. And note that this is just an extension of the kind of classical definition of work, that work is a force times a change in distance or a displacement. This is sort of the F delta X idea blown up into three dimensions is one way to think about it. Since the final volume is smaller than the initial volume, that means that delta V is less than zero. Delta V is negative. And so in calculating negative P, the pressure of course has to be positive times delta V, we'll end up with a positive number over here. And thus the work is positive. And so we could say that W on, the work done on the, the gaseous system in purple here is greater than zero. So key ideas with expansion work, it involves either compressing a gas, and that's going to involve work on the system, positive, or expanding the gas, in which case work is being done by the gaseous system and the work will be negative. And we can calculate that work in quantitative terms using this expression, negative P delta V. And the units of this, by the way, are energy, energy units. For example, a joule corresponds to some pressure times some change in volume. For expansion work, you'll see units of energy like liter atmospheres with the atmosphere unit of pressure and liter the unit of the change in volume. But joules and other units of energy, calories, will work just as well for this. They just may require a few more unit conversions to make them work out.